Greetings, I'm John the Spirit. It's time for an unexpected detour into the land of applied energistics, and welcome to New Omnifactory Super Shorts. Applied energistics is a mod useful for many things, including large scale storage and distribution of fluids and items, and also auto crafting, which we won't be using quite as much. But why, Jonathan, you ask, do you need any new fluid storage when you already have this wonderful fluid line, and you already you just put backlogs in your reactors, and that's everything you need to do, and why would you want to store anything else? It is true that I want this factory to be a passive factory. That is, for whatever outputs I need, whatever inputs I need to resources, I always have enough running in terms of timing-wise, so I always have enough machines to support my, my needs. And so I don't want to rely on backlogs, but the problem with things like the distillation tower is not that one item will backlog or that I want a lot more of one item than another, it's just that naturally some things will be more used than others, and gradually I'll build up an excess. Consider, for example, the steam crack naphtha. I am getting a lot of things that I probably need, ethylene especially, which will totally displace um, this biomass stuff that I'm using to create um, my, uh, my polyethylene and polyvinyl chloride. However, in this recipe, you get an awful lot of it, 500 millibuckets per recipe, and I need some of the things in this list much more than I need ethylene. So what's going to happen is that ethylene will stock up and clog up this distillation tower. Now you say, oh, Spirit, you could just void it. But if I'm going to void a fluid, I need to make sure that I'm only voiding it when nothing else needs it. To do that, I might, for example, have to use Ender.io's priority system. However, if you're using the priority system, you can't do round robin. And round robin is generally buggy anyway, but... The point is, I want firstly to store some of the materials that I'm getting overly much from things like the distillation tower. I want to be able to trash and void them when I'm getting more of them than I need, and I still want to be able to round robin them around my world. You see, this isn't a problem for one block for, for machines that create only one kind of fluid. For example, polyvinyl chloride. When you make it, all you get is polyvinyl chloride, so you don't have some kind of excess fluid being created. But what about salt processing? As I get rock salt, rock salt ends up electrolyzing into chlorine. And we remember that when I was creating this system, I noted that if the chlorine filled up, the rock salt will clog up, and everything else would clog up. So I decided to set up this silly system where rock salt would go into this drawer and then get pulled out of it when needed. In a sense, what I'm going to do with Applied Energistics 2 will fulfill a similar use case, just instead of the rock salt, which really doesn't have any use, it'll store lots and lots of chlorine, which I need a lot of, but at different times, so I'd like to have a lot of that anyway. So now that I've given you at least two use cases for this whole Applied Energistics thing in my completely passive base, oh no, Spirit, why would you use Applied Energistics? I'm going to do it, um, but I will now proceed to show you how to set it up, and exactly what I'm going to be doing to connect this whole Applied Energistics storage thing to the main way that my base works, and it's going to involve gas, another channel. Here's a bird's eye view of this situation. We will continue to use brown to insert all fluids into machines, but machines that make multiple fluids will have an extract on another color, and any fluids that are extracted from that machine are going to go into Applied Energistics 2 on this other color, but Applied Energistics 2 will supply those fluids to the whole fluid conduit system under the original brown fluid color. So basically, fluids where this use case becomes a problem, where I'm going to clog up because I need one one of the fluids more than the other, are going to get extracted into Applied Energistics on one channel, and I'm going to pull everything out of Applied Energistics and spread it around the base. But the brown channel will still be useful for, for example, pulling out polyethylene. I'm not going to put polyethylene into the Applied Energistics 2 system, I'm just going to route it around my entire base using fluid conduits. And using Applied Energistics 2's exceptional priority system, I'm going to be trashing excess fluid once it fills up my storage. The fundamental resource for Applied Energistics is Certus Quartz. You can get Certus Quartz from Certus Quartz Ore, or from Quartzite Dust when you're processing it, and then you um, autoclave Certus Quartz Dust into Certus Quartz, which you then autoclave again into Certus Quartz Crystals. Very weird. Now, most things you can do with Certus Quartz, you can also do with something called Pure Certus Quartz Crystals, which are made from Certus Quartz Seeds, which come from Certus Quartz Dust and Sand, if they're grown in a Crystal Growth Accelerator. The one thing you can't do with Certus Quartz Pure Crystal is make charged Certus Quartz, and charged Certus Quartz is important because you can make it into Fluix Crystals, which are themselves important for a lot of different things in Applied Energistics. 
a charger to charge service because this is actually one of the first things we'll need. If I'm not mistaken, we can just plop it unceremoniously on top of a conduit and it will be filled with energy. You place service course into it one at a time. To automate it, we're going to do something a little bit silly. You cannot put charged Surtis Squirts back into the charger. So what we're just going to do is set Extract Always Active, Insert, and then Extract Always Active, Insert, and then what should happen is, so let's try putting one Surtis Quartz Crystal, it doesn't get extracted, but once it turns charged, it does get inserted. So if you put these Surtis Quartz Crystals in, one by one, they'll get inserted, and then eventually charged, and then they'll be extracted promptly. Except for the first Flux Crystals required to make our basic Inscribers, I am just going to turn them all straight into pure Flux Crystals because of this useful fact that if you turn 8 pure Flux Crystals into a Flux Block, you can turn it back into 4 Flux Crystals, and it's basically 1 Flux Crystal to 2 pure Flux Crystals. So there's no loss in performing this method, so we can just turn everything into pure Flux Crystals and most things will be okay. Now the way to make Flux Crystals is to drop one charge Surges Quartz, one Nether Quartz, and one Redstone, and then they'll make two Flux Crystals all together. I'll drop one of each of the three in a puddle so the viewers can see it, and if I can get a picture of all 64 being turned at once, then I will. One, two, three, let's see the magic happen. Yes! Wonderful sounds and noises. In order to turn RF into AE, besides the use of this charger, we're going to need an energy acceptor. Pure Fluix Crystals are automatically better than Fluix Crystals because you get two pure per one Fluix, but each pure can make a plate at the same time that one normal can make a plate. One energy acceptor, and a crystal growth chamber from dark steel bars, which we'll place next to the energy acceptor so that it gains energy, and then one, two, three, four, we'll just shove them in and watch as, fairly quickly, they gain their percentage and grow through their process. I'll also cook up some fluid seeds and, ooh, nice, so many quartz crystals. Pure nether quartz crystals can be wire milled into quartz fibers, and quartz fibers you can turn into fluix cables using fluix dust, which you can only pulverize from fluix crystals, but again, that's fine. We'll be able to use the method of crafting in order to turn the pure fluix crystals into proper fluix crystals again. Ironically, I'll use a small storage crate to store all of my stuff from Applied Energistics for now. Aha! Uh -huh. An exciting thing that Surtis Quartz Dust is useful for, Quartz Glass, which we're going to need in droves for the Emmy chest, um, and other stuff like the Illuminated Panel. So that requires Surtis Quartz Dust and Glass. Let's watch the transformation. Start with pure Fluix Crystals, turn the Fluix Blocks into Fluix Crystals, and boom. Now I'm going to make five Inscribers, which are going to be used to make the different kinds of processors. Behold, five inscribers, which I'll be hooking up to my network using quartz fibers, so I'm going to wire mill those up now. Excuse me, it turns out you cannot connect quartz fibers together, so I need to turn them into glass cables. Inscribers use something called inscriber presses, which can make the different types of circuits, and so to make them, you can use an aluminum block with different kinds of lenses. Blue lenses come from lapis, and then emerald lenses, or green lenses come from emerald. Apparently, this is an extremely annoyingly slow process. Also, apparently I have crafted two red lenses. What an accident. Well, it's okay. I'm sure I'll use it for something else in the future. While we wait patiently for that, I'm going to show you what we're going to use. We're going to use ME drives, which can store many types of different disks. Now, um, or cells, excuse me. Now, storage cells are what will contain our different fluids. Storage cells are usually made using a storage housing and the type of component, and these components are gloriously inexpensive. As it turns out, one 1K ME fluid storage cell carries over 8,000 buckets of a fluid. I find it unlikely that it will need an 8,000 backlog of any fluid at all, but that's okay. Most of the processors in Applied Energistics require a type of printed circuit and printed silicon, and then we can use any of these electronic circuits from, or the, the first tier circuits from Greg Tech, and of course I have tons of refined circuits, so those are actually what I'm going to use. There is one crucial annoyance with inscribers, is that they can only store one item at a time in each bit of their inventory, so I want to immediately swap them out for advanced inscribers, which are just inscribers with some extra steps. It is, however, a temporarily acceptable tactic to put hoppers on these things and just feed these bits into them gradually, which I'm going to do until I can turn them all into the types of inscriber I want them to be. Advanced inscriber first is running. And now they are all updated. I plan to start with three ME drives, and so for that I'm going to need three ME chests. I'm going to start with my um, 15 quartz glass, and then I'm going to need three illuminated panels, three ME chests, 16 ME storage housings, Three ME drives. Helpful note, although cables will connect AE systems, you can also transmit energy and AE connectivity within one big system by just connecting up 
um, machines next to each other. So actually, I don't even need all of these glass cables right here in order to power all the inscribers. 16 1K ME fluid storage components. Note, these do not stack. Why, Spirit, you ask, am I not immediately putting these cells into their drive? Because I need to take them into a cell workbench and partition them to store only one type of fluid each. To insert and output fluids from our ME network, we're going to use an ME fluid interface. ME fluid interfaces allow you to input fluids and also extract them. Insert fluids into a fluid interface to get them into the network. Set the fluid interface to supply a certain type of fluid and it will automatically supply it for you to pull out. This is what we'll be using to transmit our fluids across the base. One cell workbench. I'm going to be partitioning fluid cells for some, but not all of these fluids. I'll explain which ones later. Note, you need to use an actual bucket to partition these cells. Annihilation and formation cores are a staple of applied statistics and are used for everything, including the fluid interfaces we're about to create. This is going to be our insert fluid interface. I'm going to set it not to brown, but to blue, which I think is a pretty suitable color. But our extract interface will be set to brown, always active. For our first example, you may note that whenever we use air in a centrifuge, we get nitrogen and oxygen, and I remember telling you guys that I was deleting it, but nitrogen is useful for a lot of things just later on than we need it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into my AE system, but I know that I'm just going to get so much nitrogen that I don't need, so I'm eventually going to trash it. And so to trash it, we're going to need yet another thing, the ME fluid storage bus. These drives all have a priority of zero, but they can have negative and positive priorities. Priorities explain when an item enters the network, where will it go to first? They also, they're similar for extraction. The thing with the highest priority of insertion is the thing with the highest priority of extraction. So something will be extracted from a high priority item first and inserted into a higher priority item first. The fluid storage bus, like all storage buses in Applied Energy Statistics 2, basically provides a separate storage area to the network that's not a drive, somewhere where you can put stuff in that's not just a cell. So we could hook it up to a trash can, partition it so that only certain fluids can go into it, and then give it a negative priority. Because it is a hassle to get buckets of items, I'm now going to do something horrible. I'm going to cheat in a nitrogen bucket to demonstrate how to partition. I will partition this fluid storage bus by clicking the bucket onto it. Do not hook a fluid storage bus up to the network until you have already partitioned it. In order for us to store more types of partitions, we can add capacity cards. There are five spaces for capacity cards here so that we can have five more rows of partitioning. I wonder if we'll need it. In any case, capacity cards are pretty easy to make. They take um, quartz crystals and basic cards, which are also pretty cheap. Behold, due to a certain accident, I've accidentally filled up my fluid interface with oxygen. Anyway, this is something you can do. So now we know that we can fill it up. We just need to put it into the, crystal, uh, the network in order to empty it. However, I don't really want oxygen in my network right now. I'll fix it later, but I'm just going to break it. So I'm just going to filter them on nitrogen. I'll add oxygen soon enough, but it's oxygen that we're starved for. So as long as we're consistently using oxygen, I won't have a need to put it into my ME system. Now I'll partition this cell using a nitrogen bucket. To find out what is partitioned, you can press Control for advanced info and then press Shift to display MBT and look at the bottom to see the fluid name. I've hooked up the interface here, so presumably when I take out the nitrogen from, for example, this air collector, it should go, or the centrifuge, excuse me, it should go straight into the network. And I've also set the priorities and even hooked up the trash can. So what we're expecting is that that 11,700 nitrogen we saw should go solely into the fluid storage cell. None of it should go into this trash can. Indeed, it is working. You can see 11,700 is a number here. Um, I should put up a viewing panel at some point so that we can see the fluids and even extract them if need be, but that's later. For my last trick, I'll filter this fluid interface on nitrogen, and the nitrogen will automatically fill it up so that I can extract it for whatever reason I may need to. In order to remove the filter, we can just click the button and the nitrogen actually will disappear right back into the network. Now I won't waste this nitrogen that I'm creating from these centrifuges. I'll put it into my network, and when I have 8,000 buckets of it, which is a, a massively excessive amount, I will trash it. Eventually, when I'm creating constant salt, I'll set it up so the chlorine goes in here as well, um, for the same reason that I mentioned earlier. Even though we may need chlorine a lot, I just want to make sure it doesn't backlog, and we're not using it constantly right now, so we don't want that to happen. Anyway, we've done it. In about 13, 14, what, 15 minutes, we have created a working ME system that's going to be solely for fluids. I don't know if I'll ever write into this, but the point is fluids, fluids, fluids. It's going to be wonderful.
But that is it for today's episode. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed, and God bless you all.